Welcome to our ERC virtual Meet the Expert session, where I am pleased to host Patrick van der Voorde, who is co-chair of the Pediatric Life Support, Science and Education Committee and ILCOR Task Force member. Patrick, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Patrick, Good morning. first Hi. question for you. How does COVID-19 affect children? Well, New information is still coming out on a daily basis, but what we do know is that children are definitely also susceptible to COVID-19, but tend to have only mild symptoms, the majority. Uh, still, and this is important, about 1 in 20 uh, have severe disease and about 1 in 200 really critical disease. And the very young children and the children with comorbidity are more prone to this uh, severe disease course. What we also start to observe is that there are post-viral inflammatory syndromes, like for instance, Kawasaki or toxic shock, and these can be also really life-threatening. Uh, but regardless of COVID, and this is important to emphasize, there's a lot of late presentations of non-COVID disease, uh, like acute abdomen, diabetes ketoacidosis, uh, due to fear or the fact that we advised to stay at home and we cancelled non-essential consultations. And uh, this might become a bigger problem even. And we must be careful that the guidelines we make, uh, the COVID-related changes we do, that they do not create excess morbidity and mortality for all those children that are not, not COVID patients. Okay. What is important in the recognition of a critically ill child? Um, during this COVID period, whether by phone or visually, we advise for a first handoff observational assessment of what we call the three Bs, uh, behavior, bodily color, and breathing. Uh, if there's anything abnormal in any of these, then we still advise for a further ABCD approach. Um, providers should be aware that there are no clinical signs or biochemical parameters that have in themselves good test performance for COVID. And in some children, things like hypoxia can really occur without other obvious clinical signs. Uh, while um, maneuvers for airway and breathing are life-saving, they definitely also have a risk for they have viral transmission. Uh, so appropriate personal protection should be the norm and there should be protocols in place for this. But to re-emphasize, we still advise this ABCDE approach with proper airway maintenance, oxygen therapy, if that fails, high flow nasal cannula or a non-invasive ventilation. And if uh, support of ventilation is needed, the use of a back mask uh, or eventually intubation. Uh, back mask then with proper attention to the tightness of seal of the mask and the use of viral filters. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, could you uh, finally summarize uh, for us the, the major implications for resuscitation of children during this pandemic? Mm -hmm. um, you know, provider safety, safety shout stimulate was always already a part of the algorithm and this has not changed. Um, what constitutes proper personal protection will differ uh, related to who the rescuer is and the context in which he is working. Um, for instance, it's clearly different if you had previous contact with the child um, or work in a very low COVID prevalence setting that this will be different. Huh? Uh, or step one as was the algorithm, constitutes the assessment of breathing in uh, children who are presumably unconscious. And for that, we advise to look for chest rise or maybe place a hand on the belly, but not approach the child's face at that stage. Uh, second rescuer, if there was a second rescuer, can already call EMS uh, or the ALS team. Uh, and then if you recognize cardiac arrest, on the monitor or by means of a 
unconscious, not breathing normally, uh, then we would urge rescuers to at least start chest compression only CPR. Uh, to do so, you can put a mask on the face of the child or uh, in your, depending on your context, use a 100% oxygen non-rebreathing mask. Um, but at least provide non -com chest compression only CPR. And a bit different from the uh, previous guidelines is that we would advise a single rescuer to call EMS before starting chest compressions. Uh, of course, if you are two rescuers, you would have done that already. And then importantly, for those willing and able, uh, we would definitely ask them to first open the airway and provide the five rescue breaths as per 2015-15 guidelines. And they should then call for help and continue with the standard CPR of 15 compressions and two ventilations. Okay. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Patrick. No problem. Stay safe. Cheers. Mm -hmm.